Welcome to the T-Level Health Bite Size Recording. Join us as we delve into the essential aspects of extended response questions, or ERQs, and quality of written communication, QWC, in the T-Level Health exams. All information provided is correct as of April 24 and may not reflect future changes to guidance documents. Please always review the most up-to-date guidance. So let's begin with understanding ERQs. So ERQs are not to mere questions. They are gateways to deeper understanding and critical thinking. We'll explore the purpose and types of ERQs, preparing your students to tackle them with confidence. To succeed in ERQs, it is vital to understand the assessment objectives or AOs and the role of QWC. We'll di dissect, dissect these components and unveil their significance in achieving top marks. Answering ERQs effectively requires more than just knowledge. It demands strategic thinking and effective communication. We'll share top tips and techniques to help students navigate ERQs with ease and precision. How the marking criteria provides a framework for assessing ERQ responses will also be a key area of exploration today. We'll also explore key takeaways from the Chief Examiner reports. Ever, under, ever wondered what the Chief Examiner looks for in your ERQ? on your student ERQ responses, we'll unravel the marking criteria and outline the chief examiner's key takeaways. Theory meets practice as we explore example ERQs together. Through real world scenarios, you'll have the opportunity to support your students in applying their knowledge and hone their ERQ skills. Navigating and understanding ERQs in T-level exams. These are questions are not just about recalling facts, they require a deeper level of understanding. So let's delve into these in a bit more detail. So ERQs are crucial aspects of T-levels. These questions are not merely recalling facts, they are designed to assess students' ability to think critically and deeply about the subject matter. They serve a specific purpose. They go beyond rote memorization and challenges students to analyze, evaluate and summarize information. By doing so, they assess students' higher order thinking skills, which are essential for success in further education and the workplace. There are various types of ERQ students might encounter. They may align to one specific or multiple, depending on the command words. So analytical ERQs will present students with scenarios or case studies, prompting students to provide reasoned arguments or solutions. Evaluative ERQs will require students to weigh different perspectives or theories within subject area and justify their opinions. Applicative ERQs will ask students to apply their student knowledge to a real world situation and explain the potential implications or outcomes. Comparative ERQs will task students with comparing and contrasting different theories, methodologies or approaches. And finally, significance ERQs will prompt students to discuss the significance or relevance of certain concepts or ideas within the subject. So in summary, mastering ERQs is not just about knowing the content, it's about being able to think critically, analyse information effectively and communicate students' understanding clearly. In exams, AOs or assessment objectives guide the assessment process, progressing from that foundational knowledge to higher order thinking skills. Let's break this down. So AO1s, this objective focuses on acquiring and demonstrating foundational knowledge in healthcare. Students are expected to grasp key concepts, theories and principles within the field. In AO2s, students are required to apply their knowledge to different situations and contexts within healthcare. This involves practical application or theoretical concepts to real world scenarios. The highest level of assessment, AO3, emphasises critical thinking and evaluation. Students analyse information, draw conclusions and make informed judgments about healthcare issues, demonstrating their ability to address individual needs effectively. Understanding these assessment objectives helps students to prepare effectively, progressing from the understanding of that foundational knowledge to applying and critically evaluating concepts within healthcare contexts. Paper A and Paper B have distinct mark allocations for AOs and QWC. 
So let's explore these. So for AO1 and AO3, these represent around about 15% of the overall marks, with the highest percentage awarded to the, that AO2, with the 42 to 47 marks. So there's a total marks of 104 marks, with quality written communication making up 12 marks. For paper B, AO1 and AO3 again are around about that 15% 15, 15% of those marks, with AO2 again having that higher application and marking scores of around about 20%. QWC is worth 18 marks. So the total marks for paper B is 100, which making up around about 49% of the overall combination of the two papers. Combined marks for the two, both papers is 234 marks. So QWC contributes to 30 marks in total. Understanding this breaks down helps students effectively allocate their time and effort across different components of the examination. Let's explore these further. So QWC is assessed based on several criteria. So let's examine the mark descriptors. So for three marks, this indicates that the answer is clearly expressed and well structured. Grammar rules are used effectively with a wide range of appropriate technical terms utilised. In the case of two marks, the answer is generally clear and sufficiently structured. There is a good level of control over grammar and technical terms are used effectively, albeit within a slightly narrower range. For one mark, the answer lacks some clarity and may be poorly structured. Grammar rules are somewhat controlled and technical terms are used, though the range may be limited. And finally, a mark of zero signifies that either no response is provided or the material presented is not credit worthy. Alternatively, the answer may be fragmented, unstructured and contain inappropriate use of technical terms with severe errors in grammar, hindering overall meaning. Quality of written communication plays a vital role in assessing how effectively ideas are communicated within a response. So here's a summary of its key aspects. QWC evaluates clarity, coherence and the effective expression of understanding. It ensures the responses are comprehensible and well represented. This includes clarity, structure, grammar and appropriate use of technical terms. Clear and concise expression, logical organisation, accurate grammar and relevant terminology all contribute to effective communication. QWC is assessed on a scale from zero to three, with descriptors evaluating clarity, grammar use, structure and technical term appropriateness. These descriptors provide guidance of the level of effectiveness in written communication. A high QWC mark significantly enhances the overall quality of the response. It improves readability, coherence and credibility, thus positively influencing the examiner's assessment of the answer. So ERQs are in both paper A and paper B. However, let's explore paper B and the breakdown and mark allocation. In paper B, students will encounter six extended response questions, each contributing to their overall mark. The breakdown of the marks for each component is as follow. QWC is allocated 18 marks, compromising 100% of the QWC in this paper. AO1 account, accounts for 18 marks, representing approximately 69% of the total marks for AO1 in this paper. AO2 carries 18 marks making up approximately 43% of the total marks for AO2, and AO3 is also worth AO18 marks, compromising approximately 45% of the total marks for AO3 in this paper B. So in total, paper B ERQs offers 72 marks out of 118, equating to approximately 61% of the total marks available. Each ERQ therefore contributes approximately 15% to the overall mark. Understanding this breakdown can help students allocate their time and effort effectively across different components of the exam. So in summary, understanding EOs is crucial for success in exams. EOs progress from foundational knowledge to higher order thinking skills, assessing various aspects of students' understanding, 
QWC plays a vital role in effectively conveying ideas. It is assessed based on clarity, structure, grammar and technical term usage, impacting overall performance significantly. ERQs require students to demonstrate their understanding across AOs and QWC. Understanding the breakdown of marks aids in effective exam preparation and time allocation, and student, ensuring students can effectively manage their exam strategy. So mastering ERQs requires more than just knowing the content. It's about effectively communicating their students' understanding. So here are some top tips. Firstly, understanding the question is key. Students need to take time to dissect the question, identify key terms and understand what's being asked. Next, plan response before diving into writing. Outline main points and the structure of the answer to ensure clarity and coherence. When it comes to QWC, clarity is paramount. Use clear and concise language and structure the response with an introduction, main body and conclusion. Support points with evidence and examples. Whether it's theories, case studies, or real world examples, backing up arguments strengthens the response. Students need to engage in critical thinking and analysis. Evaluate different perspectives, theories, or implications of the depth to, of, of the points to demonstrate depth of understanding. Lastly, students need to review and edit response. They need to check for clarity, coherence, and relevance, and edit for grammar spelling and punctuation errors. Taking this time to refine the answer can significantly enhance in quality. Let's go through the structure of an ERQ in order to support in effectively answering extended response questions. This is an example question from a sample paper. When writing ERQs, the following approach is taken. Number one, start with the specification points to be covered. These will form the AO1 points in the indicative content. The application of these will form the basis of the AO2 points. These are often referred to in the question. Number two, the STEM will have information in the form of a scenario, data, diagram or table for the students to link or apply their AO1 knowledge. In this question, students will refer to the data provided in figure three. Compare the COPD deaths in men and women and then link this with what they already know about COPD incidents. There is often a statement or a conclusion given to allow the students to cover the AO3 skills required, for example, analysis or evaluation. In this question, the data scientists' conclusions provide guidance. Students should take each one and give reasons to support or refute the conclusion based upon figure three and their own knowledge. They should link this to the AO1 and AO2 points they've already provided. Note that for evaluate questions, we look for a balanced argument, so students are expected to give both positives and negatives and a conclusion. If a student understands the way ERQs are generally restructured, then they are more likely to understand the detail required in their response. For example, an AL1 point might focus on COPD as a disease which affects the lungs and reduces oxygen exchange in the alveoli, with causes including pollution and smoking. The AO2 point might refer to figure three and state that the number of male deaths caused by COPD per 100,000 deaths in Blackpool was 106.01 and the number of female deaths caused by COPD per 100,000 deaths in Blackpool was 82.1. Finally, the AO3 point might link the information above to the third conclusion from the data scientist. For example, COPD can be caused by air pollution when it is breathed in. Blackpool has the highest number of deaths related to COPD per 100,000. However, as there is no data provided on levels of air pollution in Blackpool, it is not possible to conclude that this is the cause of the increased number of deaths in Blackpool. The best responses from students clearly link AO1 to AO2 to AO3. They have the level of detail shown in the example and clearly demonstrate how the specification content links to the scenario in the STEM. ERQs are not marked point by point, 
But as a general rule, if a student makes two or three well-linked paragraphs like the example above, they are likely to be placed in the highest band for a 9 plus 3 QWC bar question. If a student links points as shown, then they are also likely to achieve the QWC marks as well as the content marks. Understanding how the marking criteria is applied may help students to structure their answers. Marking guidance for ERQs can be found on pages two and three of all core paper mark schemes. ERQ mark schemes consist of a marking grid with band-based descriptors along with indicative content. A response should be marked holistically, but you might first identify any points that are creditworthy by using the indicative content. Indicative content is reflective of a response that may be given by a student and is closely aligned with the specification. The AO2 and AO3 points often link together and then further link to a couple of AO1 points. Points that are technically correct and relevant to the scenario, but are not a direct match to the points in the indicative content can be credited. For example, a student may refer to the fact that COPD could be caused by a combination of factors in their response to this question. This would be relevant and technically accurate, therefore credited. A response should be marked holistically. Read the student response as a whole and decide which band the AO1 technical content identified fits into. Do the same for AO2 and AO3 content. A best fit approach is then applied. For example, the highlighted boxes show that a response covers AO1 content which is accurate and detailed, but AO2 and AO3 content that is mostly effective and relevant. In this situation, the response would be put into band two, as this is where most of the response is being placed, but award a higher mark within the band to reflect the AO1 content reaching band three. This is likely to achieve six marks so far. All responses are marked for the benefit of the student wherever possible. Finally, we would decide where in the grid the quality of written communication should be placed. In much the same way as before, read the answer as a whole first, decide on a mark, then add this mark to the six marks awarded in the previous slide. So finally, let's explore some key takeaways from the chief examiners on ERQs. So to begin with, we have understanding of concepts. ERQs require students to demonstrate a thorough understanding of key concepts, theories and principles relevant to the question. It is essential to showcase a solid foundation of knowledge in the subject matter. Next, students are expected to showcase their critical thinking skills by analysing information, evaluating different perspectives or arguments and demonstrating a logical approach to problem solving. Practical application of theoretical knowledge is crucial in ERQs. Students should be able to apply their understanding to real world scenarios, demonstrating the relevance and applicability of their knowledge. Clear and coherent communication is essential in ERQs. Students should articulate their ideas clearly using appropriate terminology and structure to convey their understanding effectively. ERQs often require students to delve into complex issues and provide insightful analysis. It is important to demonstrate the ability to explore different viewpoints and offer well supported conclusions. Students should be able to synthesize information from various sources, integrating ideas to develop a comprehensive and well rounded argument in their responses. Providing evidence, examples, or data to support arguments is key in ERQs. Students should justify their reasoning with sound rationale and logical explanations. It's essential to maintain relevance and focus in ERQ responses, addressing the question prompt directly and avoiding tangents or irrelevant information. Responses should be presented in a clear, organised and coherent manner with a logical structure that facilitates understanding for the reader. 
proficiency in written communication skills, including grammar, spelling, punctuation and overall presentation is crucial to ensure the response is well received by the examiner. By meeting these expectations, students can excel in ERQs and demonstrate their comprehensive understanding and an analytical abilities effectively. So what are the key takeaways from today's session? ERQs are gateways to deeper understanding and critical thinking, requiring analysis, evaluation and synthesis of information across various types of questions. Grasping AOs and the role of QWC is vital for achieving top marks in extended response questions. Effective answering of ERQs demands strategic thinking, application of knowledge and clear communication. Tips and techniques will empower students to navigate ERQs with confidence. Marking criteria provided a framework for assessing ERQ responses. This ensures fairness and consistency in evaluation. Understanding the chief examiner's expectations, aid students in meeting and exceeding assessment criteria leading to higher performance. Theory meets practice, so explore example ERQs, applying student knowledge and honing skills in real world scenarios. Your feedback on this recording is invaluable, so please take a moment to scan the QR code and share your thoughts. Your input helps us to improve and tailor future content to better meet your needs. Thank you for watching and I hope this has unlocked the secrets to mastering ERQs and will support in elevating student performance in T-level health exams.